We're snowed in today. You know what that means. It's time for a DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Today we're gonna to talk about skin tones. Skin tone, chicken bone. This is actually really important. Your viewer will always notice if you mess this up. We sort of intuitively know what healthy skin tone looks like. So I'm gonna run through a couple techniques really quick to make sure that, that doesn't happen to you. All right, so we have three shots here in DaVinci Resolve. I have pulled them into the timeline. We're gonna head over to the color tab. This was recorded with my Canon C200 in C-Log2. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is unwrap it from this log footage so we're going to put a color space transform and all this is doing is taking our flat log image into rec 709 so it looks normal and this looks not great mainly because there's no i did no lighting to this i'm sort of sitting in front of an open window so whatever the sun was wanting to do in this moment it's on full display and i look like i am on death's door there's like no contrast there's no shape to my face i look like i haven't been sleeping there's all kinds of issues here the number one thing that goes into a good skin tone has nothing to do with the color grading process at all it's how you light the scene and it's how you expose the scene with your camera if you underexpose then you can get some weird weird blotchiness in your skin tone a lot of times, especially with my Canon C200, I've noticed this. The noise floor is high enough that if you're pushing your skin tones down into it, the uh, the gradients that are usually present in your skin tone will go away and they'll start to look kind of blotchy. And if you overexpose, obviously you're gonna have some, uh, some detail loss on the specular highlights. We don't want any of those things. So we'll go over here to this next shot, put the color space transform on. We have added some shape, but we've done it without diffusion. So there's this defined line right here where we can see where the shadows and the lip part of my face are sort of clashing, which we don't want. We want skin to be smooth, to have smooth gradients. We want the tones to be gentle. And this is just not that. When you're shooting skin tones, prioritizing for lots of diffusion. Like right now, I have this gigantic soft box above me. You want to try to use soft boxes, balance your light, design a book light around your subject. So here's our third shot. I am using a soft box for this one. Let's go down to 250. Okay. Another thing to note, when we're hopping between these shots, this one here, when we didn't have any diffusion, I think I just had the reflector on the light. We can see on this staircase behind me, this harsh shadow, and it just screams, I set up a light for this shoot. But here, especially if the light's motivated, like in this scene right now, there's a window behind me. So you would want a light from this side so it looks like the light's kind of motivated. It's coming from the window, maybe. We call this a sourcey look. If someone's sitting in the middle of a dark room and there's a light on them that's kind of obvious, you don't want that. You want light to look motivated and natural. We don't really have a window in frame here, so there's no way for you to know if there is a window anywhere that's throwing natural light in. There was, but at least we have more subtle gradients here. It's not throwing an emphasis on the blemishes of my face or anything like that. This is a good place to start. Always prioritize lighting correctly, white balancing correctly, exposing correctly. Let's start the actual color grading process. The first thing I'm gonna do that's always helpful with skin tones, and I usually do with most shots anyway with digital sensors, I think this is a little bit too sharp. So what we're gonna do is just massage the mid-tone detail back to negative 20. Then we'll go to the blurring and do 0.53, because later we'll get a little bit of sharpness back when we add our film grain. I like to do 35 millimeter 400T, I always go into the mid-tones and turn the mid-tones down. I don't like when there's a bunch of grain sort of dancing on the faces. Turn the over opacity up. I think that's a much better texture. Also, a lot of our tones feel kind of abrupt here. I like to prioritize smooth shadows. So I'm gonna do a little bit of an S-curve, bring up the really dark parts. I'm gonna turn off film grain so this computer performs a little bit better. We'll just do a really simple S-curve, okay. That looks much smoother to me. Now let's get into actually correcting the skin tone. If we go over to our vector scope, this line right here represents most skin tones. I don't think it's an ultimate source of truth. It's just kind of something to, to guide your eye. And we are falling way too far towards like red magenta. And you can kind of see that it's a little bit tomato-y. The simplest and probably most widely adopted way to do this is to go into your hue hue. So if you grab the whole red channel and you just ease that back. 
make it a little bit orangey. You don't want to go too far because then you're going to look sick. We'll go like there. And then you can actually go to hue saturation and boost it a little bit if you want. Pretty simple. I look a little bit more lively. Here's another method that's relatively new. And that's to go into your color warper. We're going to do 12 divisions. And then if you sort of swim around the skin tone with your qualifier, you can keep your eye down here on the actual color warper. You can see where it's landing. And if you just stop on a point, you can drag in a direction and shift it. Maybe I'd go there. That's a vast improvement. I'm gonna show you my favorite method to do this, and that's to go into the qualifier. We'll hit Shift H so we can see everything that's happening and just drag a really quick mask around your skin tone. We'll go to the second page here of Matte Finesse, turn the denoising up so we can smoothen it out. Shift H, go into your primaries. I'm usually gonna do gamma, just Add a little bit of color in there. And then this is the most important part. Good skin tones pop, not because the skin tone itself is popping, but it's because there's color contrast. If your shadows and your environment leans a little bit more towards like a gentle cyan blue and your skin tone is nice and, and natural and orange looking, it really makes the skin tone pop. So we'll add a node right after that qualifier. We'll grab the alpha, which is this little blue guy plug it into this one. So now we're using the exact same mask, but if we go into our key output, we can reverse it. So we'll hit this little button here. Now we're affecting everything that is not a skin tone. And I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit of gamma shift towards a blue. And there you go, there's some color contrast. We don't have a perfect key here. I would spend a lot more time if this was a big project, but the point is you can use this technique to make your skin tones pop a whole bunch more. We'll turn the film grain back on. Texture looks better because of this unsharpening that we did. This is a much better result than if we go back and look at, <laughs> I mean, that looks terrible now when we switch between these two. Hopefully you found any part of this useful. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, put them below. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.